Tonight on Sports Sunday, the 2020 season is over. Texans ended with another heartbreaking loss, but now it's time to move forward. Has J.J. Watt played his final game? There's too many unknowns to really know, but if it is, I really, it's unfortunate that it wasn't in front of a full stadium. We discuss in 610's John Lopez weighs in on the GM and head coaching jobs. The Tom Herman era is over, and soon the Steve Sarkeesian era begins. A conversation with Roger Wallace about what this means for UT. Plus, we're closing in on the high school football state championships. We'll break down who can bring a trophy home to Houston. We'll get you fired up for Sports Sunday. Good, good. And it starts right now. Live from KPRC Channel 2, this is Sports Sunday. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Sports Sunday. Happy New Year, our first show of 2021. How about that? Today, we have finally witnessed the final game of the 2020 season for the Texans. Of course, it went wheels off after that 0-4 start, and they never recovered. Yeah, plenty going on. The Texans' season mercifully over. The Texas Longhorns mercifully firing their <laughs> failing coach. And Texas A&M getting the best out of Houston area high school talent, which, by the way, I pick up a few more state titles here in the next couple weeks. But how do Longhorns fans feel about that new coach? Some mixed reviews yeah. on the hire, but no mixed reviews on the Texans season. This mm. was a dumpster fire, Randy. Yeah, yeah, we're ready for the offseason. Big changes ahead. Let's get to what went down there at NRG Stadium today. Uh, Titans needed a win today to lock up their first AFC South title since 08. Running back Derrick Henry chasing after 2,000 yards. He got it started second quarter when he broke free. 52-yard touchdown. He wound up with 250 yards today. 17 at 9, Titans at the half. Then here in the third quarter, Texans with the flea flicker. Johnson back to Deshaun Watson, who unloaded it to Brandon Cooks, made it 24 15 and 31 28. Tennessee going to the fourth. Texans finally take their first lead when Watson hooks up on the seven yarder to Farrow Brown. 35 31, Texans on top. Tied at 38 after Tannehill and A.J. Brown connect for the deep ball and then. Doink and in. Mm. Sam Sloman, 37 yards out. 41-38, mm. your final. The Titans win five close losses in ridiculous circumstances for the Texans. They finish 4-12. and 12. Was this it in Houston for J.J. Watt? If it is, I really, it's unfortunate that it wasn't in front of a full stadium um, and all the fans, and it's unfortunate it wasn't a win. It's unfortunate. It was in this type of a season. I think this city knows. I hope they know how I feel about them and uh, how thankful I am. And uh, I've, I've tried to do everything I possibly can and give everything I possibly have. All right, J.J. is speaking after that loss today. He's been asked this question the past couple of weeks. I believe him when he says he loves the city, he loves the fans and the Texans. He's enjoyed his time here. But the business side of the NFL year begins right now and I think in my opinion we've seen J.J. Watt play his final game here in Houston. Yeah I think there's such conflicting opinions on how far away the Texans are from contending and that's what J.J. wants. He wants a contender. Mm -hmm. I've read both good and bad. In my opinion they are far away mostly because of the cap situation. You're just not going to have enough money to do the total roster overhaul that you need. Texans need to overhaul the O-line, the D-line, the secondary. That's just too much to rework. Yeah. Oh, and they don't have any draft picks. Thanks, Bill O'Brien, right? Yes. <laughs> so much of it depends on who comes in as general manager. And J.J. has alluded to that. What that person's vision is as far as rebuilding this mess of a roster that O'Brien left. Now to college football. Randy, big news emerging from Austin. Uh, yeah, the 40 acres buzzing over the weekend. Top story for the weekend. Look no further than Austin, where Tom Herman's four-year run at Texas officially is over. Herman fired. Had a winning record while he was there for four years, but no Big 12 titles. And A.D. Chris Del Conte felt a change was indeed needed. And the next man up, Steve Sarkeesian, a well-known name in college football, for better or for worse. Previously head coach at USC in Washington, currently the OC at Alabama. The man known as Sark is excited to take over such a storied program. Super excited about the team just in general. I think this is a very talented football team. I've got a chance to watch them a few times this season. There's a lot of talent on this team. Clearly, um, there's work to be done or a change wouldn't be made. And then our job ultimately is to put our, our young men in the best position to be successful. And whether that's on the football field, in the classroom, or in life, 
Uh, and I think all three of those things go hand in hand. All right, uh, Sarkeesian speaking yesterday on Zoom. Hey, the timing of this, I think, is odd because the AD, Del Conte, actually gave Herman a vote of confidence recently. But now look at the UT program. He took a look. They have not progressed enough. It's clear where they are right now. They reached out to Sarkeesian reportedly a couple of weeks ago. Urban Meyer, the only guy I know of that said no thanks, wasn't going to work out for Texas. This is a coveted job. Sarkeesian has the trust of Nick Saban, and that says a lot. I think Sark has experience leading a major pressure program mm -hmm. in USC. That's a pro. He left due to alcoholism, not losing. The win, loss record, though, when you look at his, his as a head coach, it's not particularly impressive. Yeah. Tom Hurden makes sense as a hire, but he failed. Sark doesn't really nearly make as much sense. Washington got better after he left. USC didn't really, but we know the issues with Clay Helton. <laughs> First reaction, though, I'm a little confused as to this hire at a big school like UT. Yeah, I think at this point, Longhorns fans want a name that will wow them, right? It seemed 50-50 on Twitter, mixed reaction, like you said, Ari, on that hire, for sure. But 100% reaction on Tom Herman being fired. Right. Everybody was happy about that. He couldn't win a Big 12 championship like we talked about. Folks seemed to just be happy he was gone. But one thing that was certain was that they wanted him gone for good. For more on the Longhorns, here's Randy with Roger Wallace. All right, thanks. Let's dive more into this big news uh, coming out of Austin. A new football coach on board, Steve Sarkeesian, replacing Tom Herman. Let's talk about it with a guy who's been on the scene in Austin for many, many years uh, from KXAN TV, Sports Director Roger Wallace, also a color analyst on the football broadcast. Roger, thanks for the time. Good to see you, man. My pleasure. Thanks, Randy. How much of a shock was this announcement yesterday when the uh, change was made by Chris Del Conte and UT? Well, I think the fact that nobody broke the story tells you that at least the, when they did it was a surprise to everyone in light of winning their last two games by a combined 70 points. The statement, as vague as it was uh, before signing day, that he would be back in 2021, I think it did catch a lot of people off guard. He's leaving with uh, what well, he had a winning record each of the years he was there, just didn't win the big one, right? Uh, the Big 12 championship. Yeah, and it was back-to-back. Uh, -back. TCU, uh, a team they were favored heavily after pulling off that miracle at Texas Tech. They come home, and then four overtimes against Oklahoma, against a young Spencer Rattler. Obviously, he's improved a lot since early in the season. But those two games, and still, Randy, they go into that Iowa State game with a chance. If they beat Iowa State, they could still get to the Big 12 championship game. What are you hearing right now on this hire of Steve Sarkeesian? Uh, are people on board with it? Are people caught off guard that he was the choice? Well, his name has kind of come up since uh, the Urban Meyer flirtation ended. Uh, but, but, you know, Randy, I think everyone here has learned by now that it really doesn't matter what it appears to be. It's, you know, what is he going to do? Tom Herman appeared to be the slam dunk choice four years ago. He was sitting down there at Houston doing what he did, beat Oklahoma, beat Jimbo Fisher in Florida State. So it looked like that was the perfect match, and maybe they had their next, you know, Mac Brown-type coach. So, so who knows? Sark's got a great offensive reputation, but as you know, Randy, there's so much more that goes into a job like Texas than just, you know, the actual coaching. What is Sarkeesian inheriting in your estimation of this program right now, uh, talent-wise, and how close can they be with a new set of eyes leading the program now? Uh, the spot everyone points to is B. John Robinson, the freshman running back, and the way he came on at the end of the season and, and the fact that they could build around him on offense. Uh, defensively, DeMarvion Overshone's a guy that says he's coming back, and I think he's a huge piece uh, to that defense. And then Keandre Coburn, uh, big defensive tackle, uh, should be really good next year. Their piece is there, but uh, as you know, Randy, there are a lot of pieces up in Norman, and that quarterback's coming back with Lincoln Riley. So... It's not going to be an instant fix, I wouldn't think, no matter who the coach is. Big news indeed coming out of Austin. Roger, as always, a good catch up with you, man. Uh, and we'll look forward to a new season coming up for the Longhorns. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Randy. Happy New Year. You too. All right, thanks, guys. Hey, this was a good one last night. Aggies meeting North Carolina in the Orange Bowl. Devon A. Chain was the hero of the second half. Four minutes left. Regained his balance there. That, of course, is going to be a touchdown. Nobody could even get close to him. And then he would do it again. Why not? What a game for Jimbo Fisher and the Aggies, especially that Fort uh, Ben Marshall alum, Devon A. Chain. First off, I got to thank the alum for that. And then, 
You know, it was a, a counter play. You know, uh, Jalen, the number 85, Jalen Waterman made a hell of, I mean, <laughs> a great block. You know, uh, and I was just following my block because, you know, they made it easy for me. So I was just thank them, and uh, they made it easy just, just for me to do my job. Man, Texas a and doing well recruiting, getting a lot of these superstar kids out of Houston. Devon A. Chain, he was mm -hmm. awesome at Fort Ben Marshall last year. Devon DeMoss, they're getting Shadrach Banks this upcoming year. I think they're a quarterback and a few good defensive players away from being a real contender. Defense has been the issue for a while with them now. Yeah, Shadrach Banks is going to make a huge difference. We saw him play this weekend for North Shore. I love this for Jimbo. I love this for their program. And I also love that Houston is such a hot spot for their recruiting. Yeah, he, he loves being down here. They're going to have another haul coming up in in February as well, so uh, definitely Jimbo Fisher making an impact here in the Houston area. Aggies uh, making that big step in year three under Jimbo Fisher. Aggies uh, wanted to be in that college football playoff. Instead, they watched the games on Friday. Notre Dame, no business being in, in my mm -hmm. opinion. Not even close with Alabama, all tied in that one. But a shocker in the Sugar Bowl. How about Ohio State proving they did belong, blowing out Clemson 49-28. And here's your national championship matchup. Number one, Alabama. Number three, Ohio State. The big question, guys, with the Buckeyes, they only played seven games this whole season. Do they deserve to be in the title game? Tell you what, uh, I didn't think Ohio State earned it to be in, but it's too late. They're in now. Now they're going to play for a title. But talent-wise, I've said all along, they've got plenty of firepower on both sides. Too much for Clemson. Josh Fields took that shot to the ribs. He stayed in. They're playing great football. I think Bama is going to be tested in this game. I think they're going to win, but I also expect a pretty high-scoring game between these two. Yeah, I just love that Dabo ranked Ohio State number 11 in the country, which was ridiculous. Yeah. It was obviously overly cocky. <laughs> I think Ohio State could beat Bama. I think they will beat Bama, and I don't even like Ohio State. I don't like that program, All but right. they looked really good. Yeah, I was just getting to this. Vanessa, we're, we're on the same page here. We both hate go. Ohio State. We do. However... Why the disrespect this season for this team? They're clearly the best team in the Big Ten. It's not their fault that the league took forever to figure out what they right. wanted to do when it came to a football season. Plus, it's not like being game-tested, you know, only playing six, seven games. It's not an advantage for Ohio State. Why is everyone so upset they're in the playoff? They're clearly good. Beating Clemson's impressive. They beat the Tigers. They beat Bama back-to-back. -back. There's no doubt that's the best team in the country. I do think Bama's going to end up winning the title. Though. It'd be a good one, though. Looking forward to it. Hey, uh, coming up, Texan season. It's over, finally, 4-12. So what's next for these guys? What type of GM and coach does Cal McNair need to hire? Sports Radio 610's John Lopez joins in the program. All right, and then the number five Houston Cougars facing SMU without a key player. That's next. Welcome back to Sports Sunday, everybody. Time to dive back into the Texans after that uh, another loss here at NRG Stadium and the way it went down, typical of 2020, right? Hey, let's bring in John Lopez from Sports Radio 610 in the loop. You hear him every day. You've been around forever. John, good to see you, man. It's great to see you. No matter how it is, it's always good to see you, man. Hey, it's time to move forward. You turn the page. They've got some big decisions to make coming in in the next uh, couple of weeks. I would imagine you're going to have at least a GM on board. You are, and I think it's one of those situations where the Texans, I mean, they, they can't waste any time here. Uh, Adam Gase got fired today, so the Jets, the New York Jets job is open. As much as it's an attractive job, you, you can't waste any time here. And I know the Texans have, have done things, you know, kind of in a deliberate way. They didn't take advantage of that window of opportunity where they could have interviewed people last week or even the week before based on the new NFL rule where where you could, you could interview currently employees, guy, employees, they passed on that. My thing is just get going and turn over every rock and find the right guys. When you're looking at the head coach, uh, John, the, the style and the personality, do you need an offensive-minded head coach? Or when you look at this defense and the issues this defense has right now, do you need to go that direction with the head coaching position? I think it's a fair I'm, question. I'm on the record uh, saying that, that I, I hope they get Robert Sala from San Francisco. He's more than ready. Mm -hmm. I get, I, I would support Eric Bieniemy, who's an offensive guy. But And the reason I like a defensive-minded head coach first is because I feel like with those San Francisco 49ers connections that Robert Sala has uh, in San Francisco, he's got a pipeline to the Shanahan offense. Fix that defense, which needs huge help. The biggest last play, uh, the completion to A.J. Brown today, that epitomized everything with this defense. I mean, just a safety making a horrible decision, you know, biting on the crossing route. I mean, I would much rather have a defensive mind head coach 
and then just kind of push the offense to one guy, that coordinator that you trust to just get in the room, have one voice in Deshaun Watson's ear, and just let him have the offense, and then the head coach becomes more of a leader of men, more of a head coach, Mm -hmm. CEO type, and a defensive-minded guy. As much as you need some help on the offense, obviously on the interior offensive line, I would I would prioritize number one, the secondary, number two, the defensive line, and number three, outside backers slash rush ends. This defense is a total mess. This is a bad roster. I hate to be so blunt about it. This is a bad defensive roster. John Lopez, Sports Radio 610, in the loop, 10 a.m. to 2 every day. J-Lo, good to see you, man. You too, my man. All right, let's check in on the Cowboys. Took on the Giants today. Both needing a win to keep their playoff hopes alive. Giants get it going. How about the little end around here? Sterling Shepard, he's turning. He's in. He fights his way in. Made it 6-0. Cowboys down four late. Andy Dalton looking for the lead here. He's picked off, though, the floater. Xavier McKinney gets it done with the loss. 6-10 record. Cowboys officially eliminated. All right, to college hoops now, number five, UH Cougars on the road at SMU without Caleb Mills tonight. First half, Cougs down one off the inbounds. Marcus Sasser drains the three. Cougars led it 15-13. Second half, UH took control. Dejon Giroux finishes with 15 points. Nice touch there. More from Sasser. Three from Sasser here led the way with 17 points. Cougars win 74-60 to to get back on track. It's a big win, no question about it. Uh, winning two out of three on the road is a huge accomplishment. I'm proud of this team, very, very proud of this team. One of the hallmarks of good teams is you stay on the attack, especially on the road. You know, we, we wanted to stay with them. If they pressed us, we wanted to go score. All right, hey, let's show some love to the Aggie women's basketball team. They started conference play with a big win, 92-67 over Florida. They remain undefeated on the season, 10-0. Next up for the Aggies are the Kentucky Wildcats on Thursday. The Houston Rockets head into a four-game week with a 2-2 two and two record with both wins coming against the Sacramento Kings. They open the week Monday with Steven Silas facing his old team and one of the best coaches in the league in Rick Carlisle in the Mavs. Um, but it'll be good to see those guys. You know, obviously, Coach Carlisle did so so much for me, and uh, I haven't really gotten the chance to say thank you in person to him. So um, I'm looking forward to that. All right, 7 o'clock tip uh, tomorrow. Uh, by the way, shout out to uh, Coach Silas's daughters. They sing the national anthem. It was I think so cute. They were un- unbelievable. Oh, a lot of talent there. Adorable. Hey, 2-2 two two to start the year and nearly beat the Blazers there to open the season. This is going to take a little bit of time to build chemistry, I think, with James Harden and the new guys. Wall looks great. Christian Wood. This guy's been terrific. I've been very impressed with what he's brought to the table. Yeah, we've only seen the full-strength Rockets just once so far this season. Otherwise, I've been extremely impressed with the guys you just mentioned. If Christian Wood is a 24-10 and guy in the league, I mean, the Rockets are pretty scary in that case. And the first few games, it was, okay, maybe Christian Wood is showing out, and when the key players return, he won't be as productive. Not the case at all. And Eric Gordon is comfortable in his role. The guys coming off the bench are contributing a lot, and that is key. I think the Rockets could be pretty good this year if that all keeps up. Coming up next on Sports Sunday, we'll run through the top high school football teams in the area. Who can bring a home a state title to Houston next? All right, welcome back to Sports Sunday. We've hit the new year, and the uh, Texas high school football playoffs are now in their final stretch. Yeah, we've seen some really impressive resiliency when it comes to dealing with this COVID pandemic for these teams. Yeah, and seeing guys who are ranked in the top 10 in the country, it never gets old. Like you said, Ari, they're living through this pandemic, and you know they want to show off in the playoffs. <laughs> Lots of them did that this weekend. All right, state semifinal round matchups are now set. Take a look now. Class 6A Division II semifinal. Katie Tigers are back in the semis uh, for the first time since 20. 2017. They'll play Buda Hayes. They're out of the Austin area. That one's set for Saturday in Waco. They'll play at Baylor's McLean Stadium. It's just about perseverance and about being able to face adversity. And, you know, all the things you want to teach kids, you know, and about football, it's, it's come through this year with them. And I'm extremely proud of them for doing that. North Shore looking to go back to back to back, and they're in the final four. The Mustangs taking on Austin Westlake next Saturday in the state semifinals. Both teams undefeated, both defending state champions. It's going to be a good battle at Legacy Stadium. Here's Demetrius Davis. Uh, you know, just my teammates. You know, my teammates do so much for me, so I try to do as much as I can for them. You know, they block great. The receivers block great, too. So, you know, that let the running downfield for me happen. 
Uh, yeah, that's a great complete win. You know, defense been playing great every week, so you know they get better and better. And Crosby knocked off Fort Bend Marshall to advance to the state semifinals. This guy was a story right here. Crosby was led by Reggie Branch's four touchdowns. They're 12 and three overall. They could be dangerous. Yeah, shout out to, to Crosby, by the way. Three consecutive wins in postseason play against undefeated teams the last few weeks. They're wow. getting better. As for 6A, Katie is solid. We know that on both sides. They're playing at a very high level. They're going to be favored this weekend. But uh, Austin Westlake, they've got some firepower. I, I like North Shore to win, but it could be closer than people think going into this one. Yeah, I'd love to see both Katie and North Shore bring home state titles in 6A and then maybe bring Katie back up to Division One next year. <laughs> for Crosby really turning it right. on late in the year. They have a three-loss season, and they are just picking it up at the right time. Yeah, North, Sh uh, North Shore always has huge targets on their backs, right, guys? I know John K. runs a tight ship. He told me this is one of the most mature groups he's ever had, and I know that they'll be ready and will be back after the break.